YouTube followers, Michael Opinion War Games. I'm actually sitting here looking at the uh, Storm of Ball book, or Death Storm, um, and looking at, not those guys, him, uh, the Dreadnought in here, because it's been a while since I've built a Dreadnought, and I have the instruction book out, and I'm, there's three different Dreadnoughts I can build here, um, and... I'm just sort of, I need something to go off of as far as like rules, so uh, the Shield of Ball, the Death Storm campaign supplement book, supplement me out. Um, I am thinking about, um, well, I have made my decision. I am going to make him the Death Company Dreadnought. Um, as for like how I'm going to paint my Space Marines, I am going Blood Angel. Uh, I'm going to get the Blood Angel Codex. As far as color schemes go, um, I have been really, like, not sure. Um, I'm not going to do the whole Nova Marine thing, uh, since I, I am I am really hesitant to do that. Um, if I did Nova Marine, since they are a uh, Ultramarine chapter successor, they'd have to go out of the Space Marine Codex, and I want a specialized codex. I don't want the Jack of All Trades Codex. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'm thinking about going, like, you know, doing standard uh, Blood Angel colors, like, with the Death Company, doing black and red. Uh, with, the, with the Death Company Dreadnought, you know, doing the black. And with regular, their Space Marines just go red. Um, but I'm not really sure yet. Because uh, I still gotta look up Space Marines, uh, the Blood Angel successor chapters. Because since I am going to do their codex, I want to do something similar to, you know, I want a successor chapter. Or that, or I'll come up with my own paint scheme, which is probably not going to happen. But, yeah, sitting here, um, something has occurred to me that I've never talked about what type of primer I use, um, what primers I think are best. Um, so, short, uh, I'm going to try to make this short, sweet, to the point. It's probably not, this is probably going to be a little bit, bit of a rant. So, um, I'm going to scale primers on a scale of 1 to 4, um, as far as price-wise go. Um, and with qual with price comes quality. Let's just put it that way. Um, you're generally going to pay for what you get. So, um, on a 1, it's the $1 can. Um, and you're going to get, like, sudden it's going to be like a flat black or a flat gray or white or something, um, and hopefully no moron came by and switched the caps and put, um, and put a flat on the can that you're buying, and it's really a gloss, because uh, you go to any, like, like Walmart, Target, any of the general stores, like the big chain stores, and you get this stuff, it's like 97 cents a can for like 12 ounces of this stuff, and I used to use it uh, when I first got into the hobby, because I didn't know how much, you know, how much I like painting, I want something cheap, accessible, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, um, it, it's, you get for what you pay for. This stuff will, in my opinion, during the winter times, because we have a lack of moisture, um, and it, it, it bubbles up, it turns fuzzy when it, it dries on the miniature, and so you're looking at it, and it's all fuzzy looking and stuff, and you can actually take your finger and, like, wipe it across it and excess paint will come off on your fingers um, but yet it's still primed it's just the paint uh, clumped up on it for some reason and it's lack of moisture that in the, the paint in it is inferior to the two three and four uh, it's just it's this should be a zero on a one to four um, this stuff is just it's bad in my opinion I, I don't buy it anymore um, I just, I don't care. Um, if I need a black primer, I go with the stuff that I use now. Um, I go with the name brand I use now. So, on the two, as far as price range, um, quality is actually pretty good on the, the two. Um, I actually have it, because I was out there priming my Terminators and my Death Company guys. Um, what I would classify as a two for price, um, this is a two for price, and I would rank this up with a three as far as quality is Bell's Far Primer. Premium primer. This is flat gray. 
Um, this stuff is super durable. It works on woods, uh, plastics, all that. It's interior, exterior. It's great stuff. I love this. I get this at Lulz because it's right next to my house or right up the street. I pay about $7 a can for this. Um, and Valspar has a great number of colors, too. Um, I choose gray. Um, as a primer because it's flat gray. I love flat colors of primers. Um, but then again, Velspar makes a ton of different colors. They make satins, they make gloss, uh, and they, I believe they make varnishes too. Um, now, I'd stay away from the glosses because those are obviously super shiny unless you want a base coat that's super shiny and will not really take a good paint to it uh, from our miniature paints. Um, I would stay away from satin is something you can go to. It's like a, it's, it's glossy, but it's, it's, it's like a shimmer, almost. Like. It's, it's not going to be super glossy, like, um, if you use gloss varnish, like I have this from Citadel, but it, it's going to have a little bit on it, um, and they have that in a ton of different variety of colors, so, say you are got a tank, right, like a, a Shadow Sword tank that you got, and you know the one color that is going to be based, um, and you're like, hey, Mike, or, you know, you're talking, you're like, man, I just don't feel like priming this thing gray. And, you know, Shadow Swords are huge. I used to own one, and I sold it. Um, and then going over and painting it, that gray's color. Okay, go with that satin color. There's tons of different varieties. I had toyed around with the idea of using them for my uh, Alpha Legion for a while. Didn't get into it because I decided to do it per model basis. And actually paint up, but yeah, it, the satins on them are are going to be your best bet. They don't have a whole lot of flat colors. Um, black, gray, and white, are from what I understand, is their is their pretty much their flat colors, and those are their primers too. Um, they also have satins in those colors, except for gray. I think gray is only a flat color. I've never seen a, a gloss gray from them, but yeah, go to your local little store, get it. Um, it's what I use. I I like it because it allows me to paint the models. Then in, I'll show you something else. That actually is considerably a lot lighter than the actual miniatures. So here's Lord Terminator. That I um, here's the Lord Terminator. Yeah, so there he is in focus. Um, he has not been primed. He is still just uh, you know, as I had glued him together. He should have went out to the primer, but he didn't. Now. Here's one of the horses. Uh, one of the two that I actually have left. Let's see. If I can get that to focus. No more. Well, it's not going to focus. But you see the difference. This is considerably a lot lighter and than this. Part of the dreadnought. I figured I'd just get the chassis or the base stone. So yeah, um, I want my pr I want to be able to see what my primer has because sometimes you got to flip them all over, put them on a weird angle. I use a shoebox, or so right now it's a pizza box, on uh, top of a pizza box uh, that I'm priming in my garage. Um, this stuff is actually pretty sticky. Like even after I let it go about an hour, two hours to dry, and when I bring it in, it is actually tacky to the touch, and that is good. A good primer is going to be tacky. Now, I do let them sit in the house for about three hours after that, so I have a five-hour dry time. Um, and it doesn't it's not tacky afterwards, but you want your, ta your primer to be a little bit tacky, um, not to the touch. I mean, if it is to the touch, uh, like mine is after I get them out of the garage, um, that's good. Because when you go to put paint on there, you want the paint to stick to the primer, so it's got to be tacky. All right, so I'm going to turn the down. All right, so the next two are really comparable in quality, um, but I have to classify them three and four uh, because four is the high range and as far as price goes, and three is right below. It's real comparable. So Miniature Market sells um, a primer. It's, gosh, I can't even think of the name. Um, but as we're talking about it, I'll look it up. So they sell a primer. Um, colored primers, and so this the three and four are your colored primers now. Um, they are um, it's Army Painter. I, I just I just saw it. Come on, um, yeah, 
Army Painter Color Primer. Here it is. So, um, these are going to be retail. Uh, like, if you go to your local hobby shop and they actually carry Army Painter paints, um, their spray cans, they're going to range at $15 a can. Uh, ordinarily, they are $11.24 through their website, through miniaturemarket.com. So, cool. It's, you know, it's it's not super expensive, like the 4 is, which we'll get to in a minute, but it's not terribly cheap. It's right in the middle. It's, it's, not, it's not as cheap as this, but it's not as expensive as the number 4. With Army Painter, they have a ton of colors, and they call them primers, uh, colored primers. I own two of them, actually. I own a yellow and a metallic. Um, the yellow, I can never get it to come out right. It just seems watery when it comes out of the can. I don't know. Uh, maybe because I stored it at cold temperature for a while and just messed it all up, and so the can's bad. Um, I have a metallic color because I use it on my Necrons because I had 50 Warriors I was painting at once. And, you know, I didn't want to spend the time and use a black primer because that's what I did with them um, with all the really high detail models. I used the black primer, then went over with bolt gun metal or is it it's lead belter now and then washed them just to that green color. Um, you know, these guys, their, their metallic color is really good. I believe it's called bolt gun metal or something. I can't remember. It's sitting up in the other room. Um, but it's really good. It, you know, it's good for the buy. Um, particularly because metallic primers are really hard to come by. They're really weird because they actually got metal bits in them, just like the lead belter has metal bits in it. This primer has metal in it. So it's kind of cool. They got a lot of different colors. Um, let me see if I can... Sorry, guys. Um, wrong company there. Oh no, that's Army Painter. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. It's probably on page three. Because they had, Army Painter through Miniature Market has like 63 different stuff. Okay, so yeah. Um, what I have is uh, Demonic Yellow. Is for the yellow. They have uh, Green Skin is a color primer uh, for your orcs. Chaotic Red, um, Barbarian Flesh, Army Green for, I guess that's a military green. Um, alien purple, uh, wolf gray, ultramarine blue, which is actually something I think they got a copyright strike or copyright infringement with uh, Games Workshop, um, because ultramarine is sort of their uh, word for ultramarines, but they got away with it because ultramarine blue is an actual color. They're you know they're flat white and uh, oh, they call them matte white and matte black. I, they're flat. You know, they're only $11 a can if you get it through the website, it's $8.24. Um, you know, they got some really cool angels, like uh, Angel Green, Dragon Red. They got a lot of different reds. But yeah, you get my point. Um, that, if you're doing large batch painting, or if you're new into the field, in a, a new into painting, I'd say this is the way to go. Um, they even have a skeleton color, which is really comparable. I've actually seen this used uh, to uh, bleached bone or the bone for Citadel. It's really close, if not dead on. Um, you know, so, okay. Oh, they actually have a new color. Um, the metallic I have is plate mail metal, um, but then they have a new one called gun metal, and it's, it's, it's like a dark metal color. It's cool. Which is something I actually need to do is make an order through a website, because I buy my X-Acto knives. My blades are. But then we go to, um, are th this is going to be a quality three, um, the army painter stuff. It's it, they also have droppers which match their um, which match their primers, which is really cool um, because sometimes you use you know as we all do like we get stray brush strokes so we need to go over and uh, you know paint over it. So they have a wide variety of stuff. They actually have an anti shine. Uh, uh, thing and their paints are dropper bottles. Um, I don't actually own any of the Army Painter paints. I've never found any colors that I absolutely have to have or that I need. Um, but it's there for you. Um, they are on a quality of three, 
um, as far as price go. Um, price is three. Quality is like a three and a half, four. Now we're going to the big guns, and um, it's the Games Workshop paints. I'm, <laughs> it's the Games Workshop brand. Um, I'm actually trying to find them on the website here. Their sprays. All right, there we go. So that way I can get you guys the price. Yeah. As far as price go, it's eighteen dollars a can, and it's like twelve, fourteen ounces. Same as this. Um, the cool thing about this, though, and I will give Games Workshop credit for this. Uh, the cool thing is that they have six different colors out um, for, like, army-based colors. Um, eight, if you include the Chaos Black and the White Spray. Um, and they actually have this thing called Rough Coat Spray. I've never actually seen that. Um, oh, it's a scenery. It's, a, it's for scenery. It's, okay. Um, and for some reason, it won't ship to Alaska, Hawaii, or Puerto Rico with that. Um, but yeah, so they have six colors. They have McCrag Blue, which is your ultramarine blue. Uh, they have Rhinox Hide, uh, Zadric Dust, or Zandry Dust, uh, Incubi Darkness, um, Mephiston Red, um, Morn Fang Brown. That's their six colors, um, which is cool because it actually gets you a fairly decent range. Um, McCrag Blue, because... Let's face it, Games Workshop sells Space Marines like candy. So McCrag Blue and Mephiston Red are arguably their two biggest probably sellings because Blood Angels are pretty cool and everyone, you know, when you start out in 40k, a lot of people start out with Space Marines. That's what I did. It's they're easy to learn. And Ultramarines are the jack of all trades and master of none. So yeah. Um, Incubi Darkness is for the Dark Eldar. Um, because Incubi would, did really well, I guess. Uh, Mornfang Brown, I don't know what that was for. Um, Zandry Dust, okay, that's for, I think, Tau. Right? And Rhinox Hide was for uh, the monsters, uh, like uh, Monsters, Beast. So it's Warhammer, uh, fantasy stuff, uh, like the Carnosaurs and stuff. But yeah, so... $18 can, it's on the high end. You're getting a super accurate color to what they actually produce. From what I understand, like Mephiston Red is the same thing as that little pot that's called Mephiston Red. Um, my old color was Mechrite Red. They changed it to Mephiston Red when they went over to this new system. It, it, they are super dead on. So yeah, and it, they call them base coats, and that's what they are. They're, they're no longer primers. Same with uh, Army Painter. They are base coats. You know, Army Painter is going to say, oh, this is a spray on primer. They are base coats. They are your primer plus your base coat. So, and I've actually seen their black used and their white used. And I got to say, there ain't no difference in their black and white when compared to Bellspar. Their black and white matches their black and white, their flat black and white, spot on. There ain't a dime difference. Why spend twice as much money uh, or a little bit over twice as much money on white or black primer when you can go with this stuff guys you can go with this stuff um it drives me a little nuts so yeah um as obviously there are four as far as cost goes um there are four as far as quality goes they the their six colors are the best that money can buy and if you feel the need that you need to spend twenty dollars can, because that's what you're going to spend, eighteen twenty dollars can, then go ahead. Uh, more power to you. Um, I get more bang for my buck for this stuff. I only spend six in between six and eight dollars can. So yeah. Um, and plus, I prime it like you know I I paint sometimes for clients here local. I want to paint for more people like through a YouTube channel. I want to be able to paint for people and be like like a, a blue table painting. Um, so a gray primer for me is good because it is a neutral base. I can go up or I can go down. Um, white is traditionally used for the super bright colors. Black is traditionally used for the really dark colors. Gray is right in the middle. So I can go either way on the spectrum with that. And 
not to say that you can't use a black primer and go super bright colors. There's just more work to it. You gotta, you gotta build up those layers, and where a white primer uh, will bounce back that color uh, pretty good. So guys, yeah, this is just uh, my sort of rant. Well, it's a 20 minute rant so far on um, primers. I was sitting here and I was like, I gotta make another video. So, all right, guys, this is Michael of Painting War Games. I'm signing out, and as always, keep gaming.